making a video. So, Anticondivis made another video. Um, you know, been a while. But it's sort of the same mush. And uh, it's sort of related to a video by uh, your your Lord and Savior, Snake Pliskinus, who made a video rationalizing, justifying Neil deGrasse Tyson being um, wishy-washy. <laughs> yeah, as a scientist, um, mushy, on the subject of his own atheism. Like, somehow it's a bad word. He's not an ist. You know, he's not an ist person. Oh, he call himself a scientist, but he won't be any other kind of ist. Um, an atheist is such a simple statement. It's basically saying, I'm not a fableist, or I'm not a bullshitist. Uh, you know, I'm not a completely retarded nonsensist made-up story -ist. I think all scientists should be able to say, I'm not a made-up story a, 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 a completely bogus, obvious made-up story You know, in the sense that we, we know the fables of Jeebus and such are all pretty much just redundancies. They're just retelling of the same kind of theme. It's the Jedi thing over again, all over again. <sighs> yeah. It's just such bullshit. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it's just real pussy nonsense for a scientist um, to run away from the word atheist, which is almost saying nothing. I mean, it's just basically saying, I'm not an asshole. <laughs> I'm not a complete idiot. I'm not a complete idiotist. That's right. And if you can't say that much, then fuck you, right? I mean, that's just such bullshit. So anyway, Snake Blitzkin is justifying that kind of politics, right? I mean, completely insincere nonsense. He knows he's an atheist. He just don't, he doesn't want to say it. Why? Does he want to leave the door open to some sort of bullshit? Now, when it's convenient, I want to run into the bullshit trench. Is that all this is about? Get me laid? I right, sell so whatever. It's just bullshit. So anyway, Anacondavod, I'll, I'll, I'll say that maybe he is just ignorant. I mean, you know, maybe he just never decided to do a little bit of studying on the sub subject of uh, evolution. And so that's why he can so profoundly misunderstand it. Um, but anyway, so he's done a video on love. You know, stupid title. Stupid, it's, we, oh, but we know this is a bullshit word anyway, right? So oh, any rational person knows this is just a, a generic little funky label we've put on a whole class of, of attachment. Um, but we know it doesn't, you're not saying anything when you say, oh, I love something. Because what you really say could be saying is, I own that bitch. Um, you know, she makes me feel important. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's about a lot of things. She, she, you know, strokes my vanity, uh, my ego. Um, I have a taste for it. Uh, I have a conditioned sensibility that draws me to it. Well, is that love or is that something else? Well, anyway. So, <clears throat> the... The crap he spews in this sense, and this another insult to science and evolution, is this idea of, of trying to describe when you're when you're describing what evolution is. Okay, it's a process. You you have to sort of anthropomorphize it to to make the conversation conversational. You, you end up saying things are made by evolution, and yeah, it's not a deliberate making. It's not like evolution sits there and decides, oh, I'm going to form it this way. We know it's just a, a matter of um, circumstance, preordained circumstance, inevitable circumstance, but circumstance, that the conditions will facilitate the acquisition of tools. And that's all we are. We're, we're a package of tools in a game of survival. And it's basically the first one to the three minute mile gets all the fame, gets all the money. <laughs> you know, I mean, and if you're not trying to run faster than three minute mile, then you're not going to, you're not going to be in the game. Well, four minutes, let's be realistic. Um, so, so <clears throat> you're not going to win unless you happen, okay, by this environmental chance thing, 
it's just like you could be running in the war and you're fighting some adversary and you don't realize that it's 5,000 to 500 or something and you're going to get slaughtered and you happen to trip on a branch and fall down. Yeah, you survived because you tripped on a branch and fell down. But the truth is you have to do certain things. Certain things will have to be done for you to survive. And so you could ask, well, you know, he's asking the question, why do we love? And he's, he's, he's implying that evolution doesn't explain it. Of course it does. I mean, it's a social mechanism, attachment. That's what it's there for. Uh, desire, lust, we know what that's for. Okay, we, we know the penis has to go into vagina uh, to make the reproduction happen, and we know that's a fundamental part of the competition. You're in a competition to reproduce. And for um, complex niche animals, animals living in niche weird environments, that activity isn't just about creating, laying a zillion eggs. Number one, they can't because they're too complex. You can't just make complexity that way. Um, but yeah, the evolutionary mechanism doesn't provide opportunity for that kind of reproduction. The, the winners of the game, the ancestors, that succeeded played a subtler game, um, you know, a more sophisticated game of not creating a massive amount of eggs. They protected the eggs they had. So there was different strategies that would get you to the same end. You could lay so many eggs that nobody could eat them all, or, okay, you could lay just a few eggs and protect them. And yeah, so we're doing the protected egg thing. Uh, that's why the eggs are back inside the woman. Um, instead of laid, <laughs> you know, to incubate, because they're protected there. And um, so anyway, we know that this whole love thing and attachment and all that kind of stuff is built, basically just built out of this idea that you become a, a gang, that there's strength in numbers, a fact, and that you'll like more likely to win if you have a gang in this competition. It's just the truth. You know, in the niche you're trying to uh, survive in. And that's just it. You know, you're competing with other things that are eating what you eat and have access to what you have access to. You're not competing with turtles or something um, in, in any substantial way. But the truth is you're going to have to acquire tools that are going to be advantageous to that competition. You could ask, instead of asking why is there love, you could ask why is there a tail on a monkey? And there's going to be an explanation. Why do kangaroos hop? Well, because the truth is, the ones that did, won. That, was, that, that gave you a competitive advantage. You were now more capable of avoiding the predators. You win. The ones who did it, win. It wasn't like nature sat there and said, here's the blueprint, start hopping. It's just that hopping won. It was a better tool in the environment the thing was competing in. And it was whoever got there first wins. That's evolution. Now, you want to deny evolution? Go ahead and deny evolution. I can't stop you. But don't say that you're doing anything rational or reasonable or fair. You're just perverting what is some of the hardest science we know. This is hard science. This isn't mushy science. This isn't quantum, you know, blah, 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 eraser or something. This is real hard science. And you're just thumbing your nose at it because you want to, because it's convenient to some construct you have that you wish to um, sell um, as a strategy, <laughs> the strategy of idiocracy. Uh, yeah, idiocracy is probably going to win because smart it doesn't have an advantage. But smart leads you into um, uh, a kind of it, it's too. It's so constraining that it takes away all these motivations and all these shortcuts to success. It won't allow you to eat somebody else's brain to win. Uh, you know, smart creates rules, and rules aren't the game nature's playing. Nature doesn't care about right and wrong or efficiency. It just cares about winning and losing. That's why praying mantises don't inject their prey with an anesthetic. Because nature doesn't give a fuck, <laughs> okay? It doesn't care about how many organisms it tortures. Torture is not an irrelevancy. 
that's just the truth of it. So there's huge inefficiencies. And, <clears throat> um, but anyway, it's just such a, you know, it's just so, so obnoxious to pretend like I'm having a rational conversation on the internet. Um, and I'm being, I'm being misunderstood. What's, what's to misunderstand? You're obviously obnoxious to scientific fact. And you make these declarations that it doesn't exist. It's, I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe it. Why? Is it spelled out by every piece of evidence human beings have ever collected? Love is just a tool. Your emotions are all tools. They're just things that make you more capable of forming gangs and winning. Period. It wouldn't exist if it didn't do that. That's it. Didn't come any from anywhere else. It doesn't exist for any other reason. It's a weapon in a survival game. Period. Anyway. So let's play, play. I will just play some pieces of it and just mush through it and get done. But um, when I'm talking about things that are somewhat personal and I guess even slightly esoteric, I guess I yeah. Let's see. But the point is, you don't talk to you don't talk about them in those terms. You know, you don't say, "Well, this is a personal delusion I live by because it makes me happy, or comfortable, or it makes me feel magical. I feel like a Jedi. You know, I even wear my Jedi clothes every now and then." Because I feel all special and thinky and powerful. It makes me feel cool. Well, go ahead and say that. But don't pretend you're doing something rational. That you're being a logical, thinking, coherent to the truth of the facts kind of person. You don't give a fuck about the facts. This is just some personal thing you do. This is how I masturbate for success. I mean, yeah, we could all write books about, you know, what gets us off. Nothing wrong with that, but just put it in the right category. Don't put your don't put your fiction in the nonfiction section in the library. Don't quite cram your fantasy book into the fucking fact book. That's just cheating, buddy. Um, it's more or less something that I ruminate on as a. I've mentioned before, I tend to sort of... No, well, I guess I'm going to argue, argue that to use the word ruminate implies thinking, and it's not thinking, it's fantasy, it's made up, it's bullshit, it's nonsense. So it's more like masturbating on. So you masturbate, you mentally masturbate on it. You don't really think about it. Here than the human male, um, in a generally speaking, that after she gives birth to her offspring, um, she requires assistance from the male because she's so busy tending to this particularly helpless human infant. We're, compared to other um, mammals, our, our young are extremely helpless. <clears throat> right, and why are they helpless? It could be that they're helpless because we did do this protecting thing, and so they could afford to be helpless. So some of those are feeding off of each other. The helplessness makes requires us to be more doting, and the more doting we are, the more helpless we make them. You know, so we are, we already know these syndromes of of how the two end up feeding on each other. It's the enabler in the alcoholic's you know destiny kind of thing. It's just a, it's kind of a toxic relationship that exists in nature. Uh, evolution. It just doesn't have any rules. It can destroy both of you. It will evolve you into a niche where you will just be suffocated, like the dodo bird. Or we could we can find a, a, a long list of animals who lived millions of years, even hundreds of millions of years, and then went extinct because they became too fucking silly. The ec eccentricities built into them became too silly. Um, I, I would argue that clearly one of the reasons why we, our infants, are so broken is merely because that we're doing this changing of the brain structure thing. And the, the acquisition of language essentially requires a very slow maturation. The operating system has to be installed very carefully and in, in a very subjective, conditioned manner. We're, we're highly conditioned and um, conditionable. We do a lot of learning. 
about our environment. Rather than having pre-programming, we have on-the-fly programming. And that gave us an advantage in the sense that we became intelligent. Um, but that has the price of kind of a crippled infant. I think those are just facts. I don't think they're debatable or disputable, and you certainly haven't disputed any of them. You're just rejecting them. Boo. I don't agree. I have no argument. I'm just saying I don't agree. That's just useless. Um, I'm not convinced that, uh, you know, when you watch these nature shows, um, you know, the wolf has uh, developed wonderful teeth to rip at carrion in order to allow it to survive in its environment. No, no, no. It's, it, it didn't develop anything for any reason. It survived because it developed it. Or it... <laughs> well, isn't that the same thing, though, okay? You want to play semantical games, what's the difference? That the, 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 end, the, the, the goal is that you're going to have to compete with the other competitors, right? So if I, if I get into the, the gladiator stadium and there are a bunch of midgets, well, gee, I want to win, right? I got a huge advantage. And if they're giants, I'm going to lose. So that's what's deciding is who shows up for work or who trips on a branch. And that's all that can be do making the decision, right? I mean, again, I go back to the war argument. Let's just say there's, there's, there are equal amounts and they go into battle and both sides just annihilate each other, but I happen to fall, trip on a branch, and I survive. Well, guess what? I won. Even though I colossally failed, I won. All right? And now that's going to be the new standard. There's people who trip once in a while. Uh, that's a winning strategy. It didn't develop in order to survive. <laughs> So we didn't, we didn't develop. Well, in order to survive, I'm sorry, it, it developed, and survival is the obligation. If you don't meet the standards of it, you're extinct, okay? So it's just kind of silly to say you don't develop it in order to survive, because in a sense, if you don't develop it, you won't survive. If you don't grow a tail, you won't swing in the tree, and the predators will eat more of you than they eat of the one swinging in the tree, okay? I mean, the guy who can hang in the tree is going to live longer than you are. Therefore, you're going to lose over time. And therefore, his genetics will go into the future, and yours won't. It's just a fact. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter how you describe the force that makes... The making will happen, and it's happening through obligation. The standard is, you know, the standard's the standard. Um, and yes, it's a pendulum swinging, it's mechanical, but we're mechanical. <clears throat> as much as you'd like to think we're something else, well, you're not. Love, in order to maintain our viability as a species, um... That's, I don't believe that's how speciesness works. I don't believe... Okay, so here, I mean, he's basically saying that love or our emotions are not tools we acquired in the battle for survival. And that's the reason why they exist. It's because they gave you uh, 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 an advantage. So he's basically denying the fact that becoming gangs gave you power genetically. Of course it did. And what binds gangs? Love. Duh, this isn't complicated at all. I'll jump ahead. I guess as a choice, um, although tell an adolescent that the incredible burning passions they're feeling are a choice, and, um, but I think that it's, you know, we, we do have the option of loving or hating. I think that it's, there's a great deal of our... Okay, you think it based on what? You just explained how... That's kind of preposterous. No one's going to believe that. That every adolescent knows that there's there's no. I have a choice to 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 to, you know, love uh, to be attracted to, or to be repulsed by. That I have a choice of some kind. No, it's like saying I have a choice to find it fun to eat smelly carrion. What? I don't have any choice. It's it's repugnant to his face. There's no choice involved. There's no, there's no mental delusion. There's no mental thought that's going to take away 
the repugnant smell. I have a choice to beat up a lion? No, I'm going to have a choice to get eaten by one. I mean, this is silly. Silly. It's like faith. Um, I'm not into faith at all. <laughs> right, so it's call, he's calling evolution faith. So he's calling the idea that you understand that there's this, this forced um, play game. And that these molecules fly into the arena. And that there's this idea that the ones that the ones there's there's going to be some that survive and some that don't survive into a future and they're going to survive because they did certain things and to do certain things they have to have certain physical ability they have to have a certain physical structure they can't do those things otherwise he says that's religion faith there isn't evidence demonstrating that's exactly what's been going on on planet Earth for four billion years. Um, but love does seem to exist, but what is it in terms of our own... Well, first, again, I'm just going to say it's a stupid four-letter fucking word. I mean, one of the worst four-letter words. I mean, it's a four-letter word. It's a word describing nothing. It's describing a whole class of emotional responses. Love of mummy um, and love of uh, hooker. These are not the same things. Nature, our own will, our own existence. Um, we know what pain is. We know what suffering is. We know what excitement is. We know what... These are all reflexive reactions to circumstances. And depending on how you reflexive react will indicate whether you survive. So if you're not, if you don't jump back when you see the snake, well then you're likely to get, it's too late now, asshole. So yeah, some reflexes have to be fast and hard. Because if you don't do what you, if you don't overreact most of the time, the fact is you're not going to react fast enough some of the time and you're going to end up out of the game. The game requires you never to underreact to certain circumstances. The bear is charging. Uh, you know, you don't have the option of underreacting. Because underreacting is going to get you killed. All kinds of other things are. What is love? Um... I mean, really. It just you, you can't see how it's just silly to have a conversation about an undescribed, ambiguous pile of nothing. I mean, it says nothing. What is book? I mean, it's just stupid. We're not really sure exactly how we can ex explain what the pain response is. People say that it has a purpose. Well, I, again, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not sure that... Right, so he's not sure. He's not sure that in evolution's function, in programming machines that acquire, acquire knowledge through experience, that there has to be reward and punishment. Pain is punishment. Pleasure is reward. Not understandable that the mechanism will learn to do the things that reward it and it'll learn not to do the things that punish it. That's another religious dogma? Come on. We have developed pain receptors in order to prevent ourselves from getting damaged. I think that we have not got damaged because we developed pain receptors. Well, and there he goes again. Again, what is the difference? How, how, how are you making a distinction? <clears throat> Clearly, you don't get something before you need to have it, in a sense. But you're just doing some sort of chicken-egg thing. And there's real, really no point, because all of these things evolve, all of these things are acquired through first creating the first mutant egg. There's, it's always an egg, all right? The egg is always the first thing. Once you've created the mechanism of, of egg adult, egg adult, egg adult. Once you create this mechanism where uh, eggs are created by adults, it's always going to be the egg that is the innovation. Always. 
but does it really matter? Is this an important question? To sit there and say what part of the process of evolution, again, it's a process, what part of it makes? Is the obligation making the thing have, or is the thing having, and therefore satisfying the now existing obligation? I'm just saying that I think you can understand that the the gun evol evolves not because there's a necessity to have a machine gun, but because yeah, eventually it'd be good to have a machine. A machine gun's going to be is going to win you the gun war. But you understand that it's an evolution to get there. It's a process to get there. Uh, the two are not the same thing. Uh, You're saying they're not. I'm saying. Well, explain to me how it's, it makes a difference. Ex explain to me how you make a difference by sitting there and pretending that I'm going to avoid the concept of competition by saying what establishes victory in the competition. You having a sword that what? Nobody gave you? I, I'm, I'm just saying, that obviously you have to have the weapon to win, but obvious, just as obvious, there was nothing in the past competition um, that said sword is the way to win. It said anything like a sword will win. Nuclear bomb will do. Um, poison shooting out of your nose will do. We could win the competition lots of ways. We win it because we acquired a tool that worked. I mean, growing a tail isn't the only way to become more successful. <clears throat> Love seems to have, you know, some sort of physiological explanation in terms of brain chemistry, I guess, endorphins or whatever. Um, but what is the actual experience of it? What well, again, who cares? What is the actual experience of it? It doesn't matter. You just experience it. But, I mean, obviously we know what the consequence of the experience of it is. The consequence is, is that penises end up in vaginas. Duh. It helps us explain any number of things. Um, you have to start somewhere. A lot of yeah, and where are you starting? I don't understand. We're, yeah, we're starting with the idea that we understand that the concept of evolution, that we understand that matter evolves and that when it acquires this reproductive mechanism a dna molecule well then it's really off to the evolving races people start reading darwin with the will to life being the absolute highest uh... well whatever you can say that's the highest obviously the will to life is denied organisms all the time this salmon swim upstream they're basically it's a will to suicide they're going to die, but they don't know that, so they don't know they're committing suicide. But what's their will? Their will is, I smell pussy, and it seems to be coming from upstream. Uh, something like that. They smell something very, very, I got to have it, um, in, and they swim towards it. You're going to call that something? What are you going to call that love? Oh, the salmon smells something good, attractive, um... Um, pleasing and it swims towards it there it's love wow it's magic it's mystical no it's not it's mechanical is <sighs> we know what love is or we know what it means to experience these things but I don't know if we really know fundamentally what they are and I, I wanted to discuss that with some people yeah, I don't know what people it is you want to discuss it with. I guess people who are going to make up silly stories about Jedis and blah, 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 or whatever, right? You're just going to talk bibble babble. Because the truth is, it's just a mechanical function. And that function is conducive to niche survival. We know what the function is. The function, again, it's just about gang warfare. Gangs win against individuals. So there's good reason to have some mechanism to glue us to each other, to magnetize us. Um, and that's it. Um, again, I'm discussing, I, I'm, I'm studying things that are, are pretty, that are often theistically based. And, and because I'm only studying them for my own, I don't know, interest or my own 
philosophical explorations, I guess. I don't really have any worry about being polluted by religious thinking or anything like that. Well, again, you're saying there's no pollution, but my argument would be <clears throat> your unarticulatable rejections of perfectly sensible explanations that you just deny existing seems like religion, right? That's what religious people do. They reject something that's perfectly sensible because they have a confidence in a dogmatic edict. So you're saying you have some confidence that it's not a mechanical process, and that confidence is based on what? Other than some religious dogma. Other than some statement that Buddha says, or Iswani says, or Dushtbari Wani says. Fuck! It's, that's, it's, it's not rational. And then you go on the internet and say, well, I'm just doing a personal thing. Publicly. I'm sort of selling tickets. To the poets and the priests. I don't think that that will do, though. I think love is such a powerful motivating force in, at least for humans, that it seems pretty real. Well, again, no one, no, no one's denying the reality of it or the fact that we are incredibly moved by passions, addictions. People destroy their life. They become heroin addicts, and they, they, they look in the mirror. They can see their own arm infected. It's not like they can't see it happening. Um, but the psychology, the I need another cookie, just wins. I'm hungry. But just because something is real doesn't mean that we don't know, or that we actually know what it is. Okay, so these are his implication that there's some sort of doubt, that you should have some sort of profound and significant doubt regarding why human beings have emotions. Should you? I mean, it, that, it, doesn't that sound kind of preposterous this late in the game? after we've collected all this information about all the consequential and this is how you create... I mean, we even know how child molesters are created by child molesting. You know. We know this shit. Um. And even if it has a purpose... I'd be interested in, in hearing people's opinions on what purpose it could possibly serve, at least in what larger context. Again, oh, well, again, I, I mean, you've already articulated the purpose, right? Protecting the female who's got the egg inside of her. It's the genetic future of the whole thing. Millions of years, hundreds of millions of years of evolution you're built on. My genetics are built on hundreds of millions of years of evolution. And they will discontinue. They will stop. This chain of genetic code will not cease. Will cease to exist if I don't protect that egg. You, you can't see that as reason enough. And they say, "Well, love helps us survive because the ultimate purpose is there. The only purpose there is is to pass on our DNA, and that's why love came along." No, sorry, doesn't work for me. Right, so that's, and that's all you get. Sorry, this glib statement. Sorry, that doesn't work for me. It's factual. You didn't counter-argue it with anything. What's your counter-argument? God says so? Um, that's not what Bugs Bunny s seems to be saying in his most famous cartoon. What, what's your counter-argument? There's no, you don't provide anything. You just glibly stand there and, and wipe away Hundreds of years of observed fact. Documented fact. Oh. And you call yourself fair. Or think of yourself as being fair. I'm educated. I like thinking. I think you like dismissing. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be something else. Because, again, evolution doesn't work like that, or at least I don't think it does. Well, again, it doesn't work like what? Uh, you know, again, you're, you're saying that this is, I'm going to straw man evolution. This is what evolution means, is that evolution says 
the thing has to ha, ha, uh, knows what it's going to be become. It knows what tool it needs to survive. It doesn't just happen to trip or to grow a tail or to do something else, and that ends up being conducive to survival. I mean, the whole theory of evolution is it has the word mutation throughout it all over the place, and these aren't like they're they're basically just you're basically just saying look it makes bad code and so it makes a hundred Frankensteins and uh, but every now and then one of those broken things one of those we didn't copy you right things turns out to be x-ray vision and you win but that's built right into the theory of evolution it's fundamental the word mutation and it's not like you know the word mutation doesn't sound good does it it's error code. And every now and then, the error just happens to be kick fucking ass. Yes, you're able to kick asses. Um, but it's an enormously powerful thing that one can cultivate. All right, one can cultivate. One who is a program device can cultivate a program. Program can cultivate program. I think that's just saying tool can use tool. Fine. But that doesn't, exp it doesn't explain the ambitions of the tool that's using the tool. So to say you can cultivate love, you're just saying you can use love to what? Um, the... Hindus have this uh, technique called bhakti, where you simply pour love into your chosen deity. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, whatever. That seems quite irrelevant as a counter-argument to evolution. Yes. I'll ignore that. Religion. But you don't want to limit yourself to your intellect. We have the capacity to love and to hate as human beings. Um... If we bring love into our, what you call it? Yeah, right. You have the capacity to speed or go too slow. Now, going too fast or going too slow on the highway, both of those might absolutely suck. And the thing to do is to go this just the right speed. And, you know, so this love-hate thing, like, they're, they're both tools. I mean, you need hate to be able to do things that might necessitate complete sacrifice of your best interests, your personal interests. I mean, hate is a powerful is a powerful tool in the right circumstance. I mean, if you're the giants coming at you, it's best that you're not sympathetic. Because he's not going to be sympathetic. He's going to smite you otherwise. If you want to survive, you might need some hate to create that survival opportunity. Um, but again, both of them are just emotions. Emotions motivate. So you're just saying, well, what, what, how should, you know, well, I mean, there's no point in arguing it. But much as much, m many of these emotions, you're not going to have that much liberality. You're not going to be able to make it beautiful or make it ugly. You're not going to be able to make it smell good or make it smell bad. You're not going to be able to make it warm or make it cold. It just isn't going to happen. Philosophical pursuits or extra intellectual mental pursuits, it does seem to change things. Um, and it can actually, I think, be an actual discipline that one cultivates. <clears throat> Well, I don't think you can cultivate. I think you can get, you can evade it. You can find something else to cultivate, okay, as a replacement. You can replace love of women with love of vanity or love of even experiences, some other kind of experience. Well, you look, you see that all over the place too. You see women who are, you know, fat because they've replaced one kind of love for another kind of gratification you know. love um, but how would one do that I don't think that that's an easy thing to do 
Um, but I suppose it, you'd have to go with the non-logical, non-intellect based based bits of one's consciousness. <clears throat> Yeah, and I would argue exactly the opposite. I would argue that if you dissect your psychology and understand wh what these reactions are that you're having and that they are just psychology, then you really have the power to break them. To, to say, look, I mean, it's 50 degrees in this room, let's say, and I'm cold. Well, I know that the feeling is just a sensation, and now that I know it's just a sensation, I might be able to mitigate against it with thoughts that would um, d lessen or diminish how much that consumes of my consciousness. So you can definitely com have competing ideas to strengthen or weaken influences on you once you know what's influencing you. So, yeah, programs can decide what programs are going to be dominant. But again, it's still a program. The program is knowledge. So I'm saying it's knowledge that will set you free of control by passion or control by um, crude conditioning. That knowledge will give you power over that conditioning. Once you know the conditioning is bullshit, then you have the power to minimize its influence. But knowledge does that. Again art, poetry, music, um, all that. I, all that crap will just get you lost. You'll, it's a vortex that you'll just get sucked into. You won't win in the end. I don't think. Sort of thing springs to mind. But again, that allows you to experience it. It doesn't tell you what it is. <laughs> um, I don't have an answer to that. But I, <clears throat> well, yeah, but the argument is you're saying not, no one has an answer to that, and I think the scientific answer is perfectly valid. I think the rational Darwinian understanding that we have these feelings and sensations because they were conducive to our kind surviving in its history is just pretty rock solid. I'm fascinated in that, uh, uh, in that entire subject of late. Um, I haven't abandoned YouTube, but uh, as I say, I've kind of gone off the grid here, but simply because the the type of ruminations I've been engaging in are kind of not the sort of thing that I are really of any use when you're discussing on the internet. Or, you know, they're really ah, uh, just another dodge. But fine, yeah, you just basically can't come up with words to make this sound like anything other than what you're claiming it isn't, which is just dogma, religious fantasy. I want to have a special super life. I want it to be special super meaning, and no, it's not any of that shit. Like the salmon, you're swimming upstream, and yeah, while you're doing it, you're having a good time. But is it really something worth doing over and over and over and over again? Yeah, maybe not. It's not the sort of thing that internet discussions are any use in exploring. <laughs> well, again, says you, I just, I don't, oh yeah, I just, I, that, that doesn't even, I don't even know what that means. I mean, realistically. What? I mean, do I have to stroke, like, close your eyes? Like, we'll close your eyes and you can stroke my earlobe or something. Ooh. You get me? Do uh, you understand what I'm talking about? Uh, what? Words. Books are full of words. Conveying understanding. Conveying a perspective. I mean, this whole dismissal isn't based on YouTube's failure or the medium's failure or words failure it's your failure because you won't follow the rules of logic you won't even accept the, the fact that you posted a title to a video that is just such an ambiguous mushy almost silly word and that you have to do a lot better you have to describe what you're talking about the mechanism that attaches us to family the mechanism that attaches us to race, the mechanism that attaches us in a lot of different ways. These are all things that attach us. To call them love, to put them all in the same stupid bucket, I think is kind of retarded. Something a simpleton would do. Anyway. 
enough of the video. So, till next time.